Earth's ecosystems have always been changing, with species mixing and mingling thanks to migrations, freak events, and slow creeping expansions. But since we humans arrived on the scene, we've put things into fast forward, moving plants, animals, and other organisms around the globe, whether intentionally or not. Once in a while, one of these transplants might have an evolutionary quirk, like deadly poison, a lack of predators, or a voracious appetite that unexpectedly helps it dominate its new territory. Earthworms, for example, were introduced into North America by European settlers and have been inching across the continent ever since, tilling soil and improving crop yields as they go. But if a newcomer starts to harm us or a part of the environment we care about, we'll call it an invasive species. Technically speaking, humans aren't invasive because we don't usually consider ourselves an ecological threat to ourselves. But other species certainly are. One way they get our attention is by costing us money. A lot of money. The US spends billions of dollars fighting invasive weeds like the pretty but pesky yellow rocket flower that chokes fields and creeps onto golf courses and lawns. Other invaders wreak so much havoc on fragile ecosystems that we can't help but notice even if billions aren't at stake. For example, the yellow crazy ant, a likely native of Southeast Asia, has been nom nom nomming many beloved and endangered Australian creatures since its arrival several decades ago. These little ants feast on nearly anything and everything in their path. Insects, amphibians, birds, small mammals, even the famous red crabs on Australia's Christmas Island, which used to keep the island's undergrowth in check. Without them, the ecosystem has veered into chaos. But noticing invasive species is easy. Dealing with them is the real bugger. When we brought rabbits to New Zealand for food and fur, they escaped and bred like, well, rabbits, overrunning the country. So we introduced ferrets to control the rabbits, but they too spread like wildfire, generally ignoring the rabbits while gobbling up rare species like the now nearly extinct kakapo. New Zealand is still overrun by both furry fiends, and this is just one of many well-meaning attempts at biological control that have ended in disaster. The best way to fight an invasion is to first arm ourselves with knowledge. Instead of trying to kill Australia's yellow crazy ants by just spraying insecticide everywhere, we've learned that the best approach is a year-long multi-step assault that specifically targets ant-riddled areas at the times when the egg-laying queens are mature and susceptible to our treatments. Then we spread two kinds of bait for the workers to bring back to the nest. One kills, and the other sterilizes the queens. Neither chemical is perfect, but executed together, they can knock out a whopping 99% of the population. But with many invasives, even 99% isn't enough, because it doesn't remove whatever advantage gave the invaders an edge in the first place. So unless we honest to goodness get rid of every reproductively active individual, eventually they'll return as vigorously as before, keeping us constantly on our toes. We really just need to stop moving potential troublemakers around in the first place, leaving bunnies where they belong, and making sure ants and earthworms don't stow away in ships, cars, or excavators. But in a modern, globalized world, this is easier said than done. For those species that we do accidentally or intentionally let loose, only to see them spread wildly out of control, our best hope is to learn as much as we can about their habits and their biology. Only then do we have a chance of keeping their harmful antics at bay. This episode of Minute Earth is supported by the Wet Tropics Management Authority, which manages the Wet Tropics of Queensland World Heritage Area in Australia. The Wet Tropics Management Authority protects, conserves, and promotes the sustainable use and enjoyment of the Wet Tropics World Heritage Area through partnerships with land managers, rainforest Aboriginal people, and the broader community. The authority is funded by the governments of Australia and Queensland. To discover more about the Wet Tropics World Heritage Area, visit wettropics.gov.au. 